أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العلم الحكيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم O oh Allah, you are the most exalted and uh, we do not have any knowledge except that which you have taught us and indeed you are the all-knowing, the all-wise and there is no power or strength except with you, O oh Allah. And therefore we ask you, O oh Allah, Rabbi Zidni Ilma, O oh, our Lord, increase us in knowledge so that we can share your knowledge to as many people as possible, particularly in this uh, difficult times in which um, the Muslim Ummah and the rest of the world are tested with um, coronavirus and um, um, the end is not in sight yet uh, we are going to be further tested we ask our Guru or Allah to give us the patience the perseverance um, the ways of overcoming this present uh, predicament, <coughs> uh, the pandemic that uh, is causing so much uh, havoc in the world today. Uh, at the same time, we are also grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, because it is by His grace and by His mercy that we are now entering uh, the year 1442, Hijriya. Uh, it's by His grace that we are now in this year and we hope we can, the Muslim Ummah can improve its performance uh, in the world from the dismal uh, state of affairs to a better state of affairs with your guidance, O oh Allah. Um, for the information of um, um, my younger colleagues and also children <laughs> who may be watching this, I uh, just want to inform you that um, we have another 57 years by Gr Gregorian calendar before we can enter uh, the next century, the 16th century. <coughs> or we have another 58 Hijri years before we come to the 16th century, that is 1500 Hijri year. By that time, another, say, six decades from now, by that time, I believe uh, the Muslim Ummah will be in a much better situation, in a situation of leadership. Uh, because the leadership role is what Allah has intended for the Muslim Ummah. When Allah says in the Quran, "Aad billahi min shaitan rajim wa kadhalika jalnakum ummata wasata li taqunu shuhada ala nas wa yakun al Rasul alaykum shahida." And uh, and thus we have made you or um, appointed you, uh, O Muslims, as the Ummah Wasat, the Ummah of justice, Ummah of excellence, and the Ummah of balance between the extremes of um, exaggeration and the extremes of um, uh, laxity, 
between, uh, as they say in Arabic, التوازن بين الإفراط والتفريط or التوسط بين الإفراط والتفريط But in that verse, Allah uh, tells us that he has, Allah has made us this Ummatan Wasat, that Ummah with Wasatiyah, that is with the attributes of justice, excellence, and balance, in order to to become Shuhada uh, ala nas to become witnesses for mankind or over mankind uh, with regard to um, carrying out uh, the mission the divine mission that Allah has um, um, has made human beings uh, uh, or vice gerunds who would carry out that uh, divine mission uh, unfortunately uh, my brothers and sisters as well as my children um, unfortunately for the last 42 years, the Muslim Ummah uh, has been in a terrible situation with so much chaos, so much bloodshed, so much violence and so much civil war, uh, sometimes proxy wars, wars conducted in Muslim countries uh, as a proxy for the big powers. Um, and there are also sectarian wars and, and so on and so um, the West Asian nations or the uh, Middle Eastern nations are really uh, in a bad shape with the exception of a few countries who are endowed with, um, with wealth but uh, wealth is not an indication of, uh, of, uh, of uh, divine grace Neither is it an indication that you are on the right path. In fact, with wealth, you might feel also, you might be uh, misguided. Uh, and now we have uh, the, the, um, uh, the phenomenon of a few wealthy countries uh, in the Arab world uh, uh, succumbing to the pressures of um, the United States of America and to the pressures of, um, of uh, of, of Zionism, of international Zionism, so much so that um, these countries are willing uh, to recognize uh, the uh, robber state, uh, the colonial colonizing state of Israel, and also to um, change the Qibla from the Kaaba to the White House. So there's a big challenge uh, before you, my children, my brothers and sisters, my younger brothers and sisters. We have a big challenge because we are tasked with leadership, but we have been uh, guilty of being followers, uh, imitators uh, of um, other, um, other civilizations, other ways of life. Why? Because uh, most of them Muslim communities are deluded with the al hayat al dunya, with the mata al hayat al dunya, the um, the uh, temporal um, pleasures of the world. Um, so I mentioned the word deluded because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, has reminded mankind and also the believers. Uh, to beware of delusion or self-delusion uh, and the word is uh, al ghuru which can be translated as self-delusion, deception, illusion. In Malay, tipu daya, keterperdayaan, and um, it's, I think, important that we understand what this ghurur is all about 
so that the future generation going towards 2077 when we will enter the next century uh, as we go decade by decade six more decades to go we would be able to liberate ourselves from the uh, from the traps of worldly horror, from the traps of the mata al hayat al dunya or the uh, temporal pleasures uh, of the world. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, this is uh, the first time uh, that I am doing uh, this class on Hiya uh, al-Muddin uh, through the uh, Google uh, Meet. And uh, last two weeks I had my first class also on Hiya um, on uh, Quran, also on Google Meet. So this is a new challenge to uh, a learning uh, environment. Uh, I'm not able to see your faces. I cannot see whether you're sleeping or you are angry at me. Uh, in a way, that's good because then I will not be influenced by how you how you react to me. But you know, but I'm not used to this. Uh, I am the old-fashioned um, teacher who likes to see the, 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 the pupil or the students and if possible eyeball to eyeball so that we can uh, interact and, and react um, and have more impact. But now my eyeball is only at the, at the screen and the screen is, is, is lifeless. So I do not know how to react to this, uh, this, this what, whatever screen you have over there. <laughs> So, uh, uh, but hopefully this is not a form of horror, uh, deception. Uh, it's just uh, a technology, an enabling technology, alhamdulillah. Uh, imagine if this kind of virus were to happen 20 years ago and we don't have this technology, then we will be in the dark. And so um, we would just have to have our classes in the sun. But alhamdulillah, with the technology now, is possible to continue having this kind of uh, learning environment um, in a new way and hopefully um, by the grace of Allah uh, it will have the same uh, impact if not better. <coughs> One good thing with this um, technology is you can sleep also. You can have a good sleep. I am the only one who cannot sleep because everyone can see me. Okay, so, um, okay, what I'm going to tell you is um, when we stopped about four months ago because of um, COVID 19, uh, we were uh, still reading uh, the book of uh, the Kitab, Gambi Guru, the book on the Condemnation of uh, self delusion. I think I should write on the board. Yeah, is it? Can you see? See this? Yes. When the uh, people in the uh, online can, can see this. Okay, good. All right, so um, 
we have been on this subject for several months before the uh, pandemic um, came, um, and I I suggested that we spend some time on this subject because um, I think many of us did not really go through a proper uh, study of the subject of guru. I myself, I must admit, uh, even when I was in school, <coughs> in the university, and when I was teaching for many years, I did, really did not come across this subject as something very, very important uh, until I began to read and reread and realized that I was a victim of guru without knowing it, especially when I was the rector of the International Islamic University for seven years. For seven years, I was in the trap of Hurur. <laughs> so I, that's why after I was no longer rector, I decided to have um, uh, a closer look at the uh, concept of Hurur. Okay? So, um, and of course, we were using uh, an Imam al Ghazali's uh, monumental uh, work, his magnum opus, Ihya Ulum al Din, the revival of the religious sciences. Um, this flower is not blocking. Anyway, this is also a form of guru, it's plastic. <laughs> this is economic guru. Uh, anyway, um, so, I was uh, using the Arabic text um, and um, reading uh, line by line uh, to understand what uh, Al Ghazali was teaching, or is teaching, because he's still teaching and I'm still his pupil to this day, uh, because there are so many things to read from him. And, um, uh, but I want to more, learn, learn more about Hurur because I was, and hopefully not now, uh, subjected to Hurur. Kuntu min al I was among those who were uh, undergoing self delusion. <coughs> because I got the position of rector. Yeah, brothers and sisters, I was telling you that um, uh, it's really uh, remarkable that Imam al Ghazali um, <coughs> discusses four groups of people um, who uh, are, are subjected to guru. And, uh, and, and I would say uh, two or three of them, two or three groups, are actually people uh, of knowledge or people who uh, deal with, with uh, religious knowledge. Uh, yeah, so that is um, also very, very important. Um, usually uh, when we discuss um, human failures, we we're looking at, at groups other than ourselves, right? But in the case of Al-Ghazali, he is looking at the groups to which he belongs. Um, he is, you might say, he was a Sufi, but he has uh, a criticism against those so-called Sufis. Uh, so among the four groups, uh, you have the first one. Um, can you see this? Yes. Okay, good. The first, uh, he calls a, a law of bad. Of bad. And of bad are the people who are, um, you know, they, they perform their ibad. Yeah? Uh, they like to pray, perform. So these are people, they're not necessarily very knowledgeable, but they are very, very um, committed to performing of ibad yeah? in the narrow sense of the word, like prayer, yeah? salah, and uh, fasting, and, and so on. So these are the the lay worshippers of that. And number two, uh, al-ulama. 
And here the ulama, he is not um, discussing the ulama of 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 worldly sciences. He's discussing ulama of religious sciences. You see, we we thought that perhaps uh, ulama of religious sciences would be free from this disease, uh, but um, uh, he is uh, very concerned that this ulama, uh, these uh, scholars of religious sciences. Are actually um, uh, afflicted by this disease. So he has several groups under this, and we are at this stage. And then he, we, we have yet to go to the Asufiya. Uh, uh, um, or Al Mutawasif, I think. Uh, because I, I don't have the. I'm sorry, I did. I forgot to bring. Or I thought I brought the Arabic text. I thought. Then I, when I arrived here, I opened my bag and my. And then I realized I left it at home. So the the Arabic text. Uh, so I do not recall now. So I I'm using now the Indonesian translation, but uh, it doesn't have the Arabic. So I think maybe it is al mutawassif <coughs> These are like the pretenders of Sufism, uh, or those who claim to be Sufis. And then the fourth, the fourth would not include academics, yeah? would be a few. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, that is Arbab, Arbab, Arbabul Amwal. These are the possessors of wealth and affluence. Okay, the neo capitalism. Okay, <coughs> we are at this stage. Uh, I hope to finish quickly and then go to see what's wrong with those so-called Sufis and then we see also what's wrong with the people of wealth and affluence. Any question? Are there? So I don't know. Yeah. Later. Later, okay, fine. Okay, okay um, all right. If uh, some of you would like to um, uh, raise some questions, you could uh, do so um, with a guide from. Huh? From Mahdi? Okay. Maybe maybe one or two questions, you know, not, not too many. Uh, once they want to ask, you can identify, but you don't have to wait for the person to come. You can just look. Check. I see me in your top floor. You don't have to wait for the cost to come. Oh. You don't have to wait for the cost to come because. Uh, once they want to see you. I can't see. We can see. Oh, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, ha, ha, must it like group me? Ha. Yes. My dear uh, granddaughter. Uh, it's good. It's uh, good. The same as Gharar. Gharar. Yes. Oh, well. Actually, um, it's from the same root. Um, gharar is a form of uh, cheating, right? In in business, uh, in uh, uh, in trade, uh, and uh, uh, but it's different from gharar. Yeah, gharar is spelled rain ra alif ra. Gharar, but also it's a form of cheating, right? And, and 
غرو is deception so it's from the same root غرة from غرة غرة is to uh, to be um, away from something from the truth yeah uh, for instance in in the surah ما غرك بربك الكريم what is it that has brought you away from your generous Lord? Yeah. What is it, O oh, human beings, uh, which have caused you to be to stray away? Ma What has caused you to be deluded with your master? So it's it's, it's distancing from the truth. Yeah. And the case of Ghara. Because of Urur, it is covering the truth yeah? uh, with something, uh, covering the, the falsehood as though it's the truth. Penipuan lah. So itu dalam Mayu, tipu daya. Dalam bahasa Mayu, Rara apa? Ah, Rara kan boleh bahasa Mayu? Dalam kontrak, kita sebut sebagai uncertainty. Uncertainty, uh, not necessarily penipuan, lah, kan? Okay, so there is uncertainty there. So sama juga maknanya it is not fixed, it is, you know, uh, dynamic. So you can't be too sure. It's not fixed that you can see, yeah. So Oru is a high level of Oru. High level of Oru. Okay. But uh, ketidaktentuan is neither good nor bad. But gurur is is bad. Gurur is bad. Gurur is definitely uh, negative. Okay, um, so uh, we are now in this um, um, in this part on uh, the um, scholars of religious uh, knowledge who have been deluded. Uh, why? Because most in, there are so many reasons. Al-Ghazali gives you so many types of, of urur among religious scholars. MashaAllah, he's very detailed in that, which shows that he is very, very concerned about the integrity, humility, sincerity, transparency of religious scholars. Because if this group were to fail, then the whole society collapses. Right? So, and, and that was one of the reasons why he decided to uh, leave that profession, of the academic profession, uh, and, and went into the life of, of Sufism and became a Sufi. Um, Okay, so now I am coming to that part uh, in the Ihya Alamuddin. I'm using now this uh, Ihya Alamuddin. Uh, this is, I think, in um, four or five volumes in Indonesian. And this one is on the on the Kitab um, Al-Muhdikat. So Al-Ghazali divides uh, his book into four. For those of you, for those of you who, who are new to Al Ghazali, so let me just uh, uh, inform you very briefly that Al Ghazali divides his monumental work into four, uh, it's called uh, four quarters. Uh, a row. So there is a row of an one, the first quarter or you might say the first book, first volume, uh, this is Al-Qadat. So he devotes to religious worship, all the different aspects of religious worship. And then the second quarter, Al-Thani, uh, he devotes to Al-Adat, or social, cultural conventions including the Mu'amalat also. And then the third, and we are at the third, so uh, 
the second volume, third volume. Uh, Publicat. Publicat. The destructive um, elements, uh, the poisonous, the toxic, um, the dangerous, um, the fatal uh, spiritual elements that can uh, destroy you spiritually, not physically. So al Ghazali, and I think people like him will talk about, yeah, you think you are alive, but actually you are dead. You think because you are physically strong, because you are um, still retaining your youth, popular and so on, you think you are alive. But from the spiritual point of view, you may be dead. And what matters with Allah is not your physical, for it is your spiritual health that matters. That is why um, Al Ghazali, again, we have to thank Al Ghazali for this, but I wish also the religious establishments will, will, will follow this that the duty of cleaning the, the spiritual essence of man or the spiritual heart to Al Ghazali is Sardu Ain. Fardu Ain. Kalau Bruce Gigi Fardu Ain. Bruce Hati, Nagila Fardu Ain. And we have to teach our children to know Bruce Gigi. Wajib. Fardu Ain. Tapi Bruce Hati, Gila Hati. <laughs> Membersihkan Hati. Itu lebih, lebih besar. Besar dalam hidup. You can just smile and show your nice teeth. That's about it. Uh, and people might use you for advertisement. Get some money <laughs> before things rot. Uh, but hati rusa, and you become a leader, the whole country can be in ruins because of your spiritual disease. I think you're okay now. So that's why Al Ghazali uh, focuses on this spiritual um, purification. Let's get to nafs. All right. Um, and the fourth, the fourth quarter, Arabia is Munjiat. These are the things that can save you, that save us. Penyelamat, unsur-unsur penyelamat. Uh, elements which can help us to gain favor with Allah and to enter a Jannah. So, hopefully, Allah will grant me the time when we can move from Mulika to Munjiyat. And the last part of Munjiyat, last part, is the part that's closest to me now. That is Dhikrullah and Al Maut. Ingat pada Allah dan ingat pada Mati. That is very, very important. But that part is mostly forgotten. <laughs> or people don't have the heart to study this one. Because he goes into detail about what happens in Alam Barzakh. What happened in Alam Kubur. What happens in Barzakh, Kubur, Hari Kiamat, Pada Mahsha, um, Shurga and Araka. To Imam Ghazali and to all the good uh, people like him, this is the reality that you have to be uh, conscious of and, and you, um, you live your life with the expectation to be there and not to be, not to be in the other place, Jahannam. And it was this fear of 
going to Jahannam, that changed Al Ghazali from the Professor Ulung that he was. <laughs> and <laughs> the, of that, he was the top professor in the world at that time. Hundreds of students came to him. The most popular Professor Maha Ulung. Then he was grappling with this issue. For three months he could not talk. What's going on to me? You know? Then he realized he is going to hell. You realize that? The way I am living now, I'm not going to heaven. I am going to a Jahannam. That made him change 180 degrees from seeking the world to seeking Al Akhirah. So, Ihya al Muddin is to guide the whole Muslim Ummah to Al Akhirah, the proper way to go to Al Akhirah without forgetting this dunya. He's not saying, oh, you have to go, there. forget about dunya. No, no, not at all. And he talks about adat, mu'amala, turniagaan, pemerintahan, hubungan kemanusiaan, very important. And uh, worldly sciences like um, medicine, he was saying, why are, you so, why are the uh, Muslim scholars um, concentrating on fit, or sort of fit, religious sciences? We need more doctors, he said. Because doctors at that time, many of them were Christians. And so we are depending on Christian doctors. Why don't we have more Muslim doctors going to that? So the path to Al Akhirah is not by running away from Ad Dunya. You have to go through Ad Dunya, but not poisoned by the, by the negative aspects of Ad Dunya, by Mata'ul Hayat Ad Dunya. So the Muslim, the good Muslim, is not one who abandons his or her religious, uh, uh, worldly responsibilities and, and say go into a cave and just meditate for years on end without food and so on. Just meditation. Right? Okay, you may you may arrive at the truth, but you are abandoning your children, your society, and, and so on. And you may be food for the hungry tigers also. <laughs> That is, if they like to eat you, but they may not like to eat you because you don't, you don't take bath, you don't, your hair is unshevelled. <laughs> but of course, you are in great, uh, you know, meditation. Okay, so um, uh, we hope, inshallah, after Mu'alifat, because after the book of um, of Guru, then we start with Munjiyat. But I would like to go to the first book, actually. You know why? Uh, the first book, Al-Badad, has an introduction. A very, very important introduction. And that is Kitab Al-Ain. The book on knowledge. That was, uh, that is his introduction. And that book of knowledge is very, very important. So after Urur, I would like to go to knowledge, because I am in that profession dealing with knowledge. So again, I want to see how I can be corrected, guided by Allah, and of course by Imam Al-Ghazali's ideas. OK, um, now we continue. Um, um, it's okay. Uh, Satu Golongan, uh, I come here. This is um, the many groups of religious preachers and the religious preachers. 
So he discussed many of the uh, deluded ways of the religious preachers. I am summarizing now after several pages on religious pre preachers, the popular preachers, preachers who, and also what he calls the advisors, those who give advice about religion, those who motivate others uh, to become more religious. He has a special discussion on that. Um, um, and I summarize all that by uh, saying that these religious preachers, advisors, uh, consultants on motivation, we have good motivators uh, in our world today. And in his time too, there were those people. And he said, um, they thought that they were, just because of their knowledge of the subject, yeah? You know your, your subject very well, but you're not practice, practicing it. Yeah. You, you, can, you can influence people to do good, yeah? to change according to what you think is good, but you yourself has, has not changed, have not changed. You think you are okay because of your knowledge, but you are not really okay. You think you will be given a special consideration by Allah, but no, you're not. Because you're deluded, you're under the false impression that because of your knowledge, because you're able to quote verses, because you're able to memorize, he said, um, the works of the Zuhad, the Gnostics, you memorize the, the works of the Gnostics and then you pour it down the throat of the masses and they were mesmerized by your uh, great articulation whereas you just memorize all that. And it's good for show. But, but you're not using all that to improve yourself. So how deluded are these people? Okay. So that is, uh, I summarize say about uh, 10 pages uh, in those words. Then I come to uh, another group, he says, Mereka golongan satu lagi golongan ialah yang tertipu dengan pembacaan, kira'ah Al-Quran. Okay? Ini pun banyak juga in the world today, kan? You have, you have Quranic competitions. Uh, and there are many people with, mashallah, with good kira'ah. Uh, kira in Indian Urdu is Kirat. Good Kirat. <laughs> Shaking the head a little bit. <laughs> Good Kirat. Okay. Kira'a. Or Kira'at. Yeah? Um, and people are mesmerized. Uh, and there are some, of course, amongst uh, the best reciters, the most beautiful, are uh, Egyptians. The Saudis don't go into all these embellishments, uh, but uh, the, the, the Egyptians, mashallah, <coughs> apa yang yang terkenal Abdul Basir. Sampai hari ini, when I read, listen to Abdul Basir, I moved. I met him personally. I met him personally. Listen to him personally. Mashallah. Mashallah. Banyaknya pahala pergi pada dia, kan? Every time. Kita dengar suara dia, dia dapat pahala, Masya Allah. Ah, it is so moving. And nobody has ever tried to imitate him. Ada suara? Oh, he can do it. Eh? Yeah. Oh, he can do many things. So, yeah. uh, so but, 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 uh, Abdul Basit, Masya Allah. That was when I heard Abdul Basit, 1970, man. Mana ada ni? New York. Dia dijemput datang ke New York, di Islamic Center New York. Atuk pergi lah. Dia nak dengar. Masya Allah. Mesmerized. Even today, I would love to listen to him. Allah Akbar. Gift from Allah. So Egypt has the gift of the Nile and the gift of other Basit. But for some other people, they are more 
interested in umikatsu. That's another gift. <laughs> Maybe for the political masters, umikatsu. Uh, Okay, so this is one group. Um, it says, Lidah seorang mereka berlalu dengan yang Hatinya bolak balik dengan lembah angan-angan. Kerana ia tidak memikirkan makna Al-Quran supaya memperoleh peringatan tegak berdiri pada perintah okay. so, he is not concerned about the meaning they are not concerned about the meaning and 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 least concerned about how to live in the light of the Quran they are more concerned whether I am really doing it to the best of you know, dari segi tajwidnya tahsinnya, so that I can win <laughs> jadi lain, jadi dunia juga lah. Ha, that's another world. Okay, then he comes. Jadi kemerduan suara, suara yang merdu itu, uh, is very captivating. Yeah. But but again, mm-hmm. patutnya kemerduan suara macam Abdul Basit membawa kita kepada Al Quran, membawa kita kepada mencintai Allah. Tetapi kemerduan yang begini, kita hanya Rindu pada dia, bukan pada Allah Okay, then he comes to another group Ini mereka yang terpedaya dengan haji Ini haji Terpedaya dengan haji <laughs> Banyak juga huh? Many people Because they can afford it would, uh, would be Happy to tell his Colleagues or that, you know Ah, oh, I've been to haji uh, Many times huh? uh, So Terpedaya dengan haji Mereka keluar pergi haji Tanpa keluar dari perbuatan zalim eh? You go to you, you perform haji But you have not really left Your um, Your um, Your acts of zul Zalim Very important Moral concept in Islam why? Because usually when people talk about the person who is zalim, they're talking about others. So zalim from zulm, sorry, from zulm. Zulm is usually translated as what? Injustice. Uh, it is from the word uh, darkness. Zulumat yeah, is darkness. So uh, it's, it's when, when evil you know, prevails over the light of truth. Then it, 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 things become dark. So, kegelapan. In Kelantan, Black glimma. The Zulumat become glimma. How Kelantan people uh, distort uh, the Arabic. Black glimma. The Zulumat. <laughs> I hope the Kelantan people won't be angry with me. <laughs> you might not know that, but I am from Kelantan. So, apa lah? Kita kritikli sendiri. Zul. Uh, what I said that uh, Zoom is special because Allah is very concerned about not just Zoom against others, but Zoom against yourself. Zoom on nafs. Being unjust to yourself, and one of the most um, um, uh, what do you 
or dangerous form of injustice to yourself is, let's say when you don't pray, you are Muslim, but you don't pray. That is zulmun nafs. Allah does not need your prayer. You need the prayer. But you neglect your prayer. You are zalim to yourself. But the greatest zulm is what? <coughs> this is the greatest zulm. Great injustice is shirk. This is injustice to Allah. How could his slaves deny him or uh, look at other creatures as equal to him or turning to other creatures? for help, for assistance, instead of Him. Allah is the only, not only God, He's the only sustainer. He's the only one who gives us uh, the rizq and protects us and guides us, uh, sustains us, teach, teaches us, uh, elevates us, provides all the uh, physical, material needs that we need and yet we have the, the um, stupidity of, of de defying him so zul, uh, the greatest zul is uh, when you deny or you, you uh, distort tawheed so mereka keluar pergi haji tanpa keluar dari perbuatan zalim tanpa membayar hutang, meminta kerelaan ibu bapa dan mencari perbekalan yang halal You do not make all the necessary But let's, this is okay, let's say we're talking about people who have you know, they have their halal things they have also uh, taken care of the parents um, but uh, and they are good with people, with their money. But ibadat, uh, they take it very lightly. Because they think that by doing good, and by going to hajj, their moral, spiritual, religious shortcomings will be made up by the hajj. Because, you know, hajj mabrur, if you get hajj mabrur, you come out of it like a newborn baby. Your sins are washed away. But how to get mabrur when you... <laughs> you may get the Hajj title. You may bring back uh, hundreds of um, caps uh, from China. Uh, made in China. <laughs> Communist China producing <laughs> all these uh, prayer caps and also prayer mats, you know, uh, give to friends, and also even these um, uh, uh, beads. Uh, where do you think they are made? China also. Uh, so, um, jadi, itulah, delusion. And maybe you come back, uh, pakai jubah, you know, you change, the paradigm shift lah, the, the, the fashion has changed. Itu di luar sahaja, di dalam tak berubah. Masih lagi mengejar kemewahan dunia, masih lagi mengejar pangkat, masih lagi mengejar kuasa, masih lagi egoistik, masih lagi macam-macam lagi. <laughs> so itu terpedaya dengan haji. Ada juga mek, mek yang meniaga haji. These are the two. Hajj operators, and you know that there are many Hajj operators who are very, very corrupt. Very corrupt. They've been to Hajj many times. They have led people around the Kaaba many times. But what they are circumambulating the ringgit, the dollar. 
nak Kaabah dia tak nampak Kaabah ni dia ajar dia, dia nampak what am I getting at the end of the day boleh bayar ke pokok ni so mereka ini terpedaya ok satu golongan lagi ok satu golongan lain ia mengambil pada jalan uh, ia mengambil pada jalan kerana Allah amar ma'ruf dan nahi mungkar yang mungkar kepada manusia ia menyuruh mereka dengan kebajikan serta ia melupakan dirinya sendiri ok you are inviting others amar ma'ruf nahi mungkar but you forget to apply it to yourself apabila ia menyuruh mereka dengan kebaikan maka dengan cara kasar ini pun masalah juga you uh, you're not gentle uh, in inviting people to Islam ia mencari pangkat menjadi kepala dan mulia he is seeking uh, position so that he becomes a leader and highly regarded apabila ia berbuat mungkar dan ia ditolak maka ia marah but if you were to commit uh, an evil thing and which is uh, rejected then he gets angry dan dia mengatakan aku berbuat kerana Allah maka bagaimana engkau menentang aku I'm doing this for the sake of God how come you you oppose me kadang-kadang ia mengumpulkan manusia ke masjidnya uh, and dia bawa masjid juga yang this uh, this uh, uh, hajj operators ada masjid dia, ada surau dia siapa yang terlambat nescaya ia mengkasarkan perkataan dengan orang itu Maksudnya ia riak dan suka menjadi kepala. So ada juga kan I think um, hash operators who um, mistreat uh, their clients because pachi-pachi ni tua-tua dah ke? Pachi-pachi tua-tua mari pada kampung uh, bergantung pada dia lah nak baca ni dah bahasa Inggeris tak faham baca-baca peraturan pun tak faham So you you exploit the ignorance of the poor, your clients. Of course you need them because you need the money. Uh, so so dia penyakit ria, ria dan suka menjadi kepala. Hobul hobul riasa. Yeah, this is suka menjadi ke, kepala ni hob cinta kepada riasa. Asa is leadership Kepimpinan Cinta kepada kepimpinan It's not wrong to 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 love Leadership If you do it properly yeah? Not to be admired Not to be adored Not to be worshipped yeah? But you are leading people To God yeah? And our role is Role of the Ummah is leadership So, hubbul riasa li wajhillah. You know, so uh, uh, riasa is wasila. It's not the end. It's the means. So we need to get leadership, but it is a means to bring people to the way of Allah. Sabilillah. Okay. So sabil, the way of the believers is a way that leads to Allah. Sabil al-mu'minin is sabilullah. Okay. Ah, ada soalan? Tak ada? Um, okay. Kadang-kadang ia diberi orang harta maka tidak diambilnya kerana takut nanti dikata orang bahawa zuhudnya telah rosak. Uh, so he likes to be seen as a person with zuhud. Zuhud is um, a semangat, a being ascetic. You're not really after worldly pleasures. So he likes to make a show of that. Huh? Tapi in reality, he he wants it. Uh, but but don't do it openly lah. Jangan cuba nak lagi do it in the open to him. He will reject lah. Depan para orang, dia tak tahu orang nampak dia ni. But you pergi senyap-senyap, but dia all masuk dalam poket dia. 
Hani ilk kez? Alhamdülillah. <gülüyor> okay. Alhamdülillah. Maksud, okay, I'm going to go. Ha. So, kezuhudan yang palsu. So, false asceticism. Zuhud itu penting. Tapi, apakah bermakna kalau zuhud tu tak mahu Uh, mem- menggunakan pakaian yang cantik uh, dan kenderaan yang baik rumah yang senang tidak nah, because, uh, sahabat-sahabat Nabi yang kaya-kaya yeah, mereka semangat zuhud artinya kekayaan dia tu tidak uh, merusakkan uh, kecintaan dia kepada Allah pada jalan Allah bila sampai krisis okay, perlu harta dia bagi Abu Bakar bagi semua eh? saya nak rumah bagi separuh Yeah. So, tapi this this people are zuhad. Yeah. Orang-orang ini ialah ascetics. Yeah. Tapi dia dapat kekayaan. Abdul Rahman ibn Auf hebat kekayaannya. Mengkali kalau banding sekarang berapa Mercedes dia ada tu? Berapa berapa ratus camel? Ratus tu ribu camel. Abdul Rahman ibn Auf. And all the, dia termasuk the ten people promise a jannah. Yeah. Of course Abu Bakar, Omar, Osman, masuklah. Okay. Uh, kemudian ia melihat dirinya uh, se- 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 seolah dia itu orang zahid di dunia dan dia itu terpedaya. So he thinks that he is one of the zuhad, but he is actually deluded. Now I want to go to jenis ketiga sekarang, okay? Now I'm moving to the third group among the um, apa ni? Among the uh, those who are deluded, yeah? Okay, and that is apa tadi? The third group, Arif. Oh, mutasawifi. Oh, mutasawifa, mutasawifi, itu lah. There are many pretenders to tasawuf. So the fourth group. Um, I would say pseudo. Huh? Pseudo-Sufis. But you don't know who is pseudo, who is genuine. That's a problem. Because when you look at the ex- externality, you think these are Sufis. Like um, I was in New York, man. Eh? Uh, the Cardinal Islamic Center, near the bookshop. So I went into the bookshop. And I saw a man with long beard. He's, he is, um, he is uh, Anglo-Saxon, white. Um, and I think he has a turban also, and a jubba with the beads. I was, you know, I gave salam and I said, are you Muslim? Uh, Um, brother, uh, he said, "No, I'm not a Muslim. I'm a Sufi." Uh, <laughs> I'm not a Muslim. I'm a Sufi. Uh, so this is another distortion of the South. The South is, to me, true. The South is the spiritual essence of Islam. It is the center of Islam. The true the South. Of course, the Prophet would be the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would be the true Sufi, but the Prophet did not call himself Sufi, yeah, neither Sahaba. Uh, and Allah did not address him, oh, great Sufi, no. Address him as Abdi. Subhan al-ladhi asra bi'abdihi layla min al-masjid al-haram min al-masjid al-aqsa. During Isra, 
Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu would be elevated to the highest spiritual status to be before Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Even Jibreel could not come close to that. And yet he was addressed as Abdi, Abdi, my slave. Okay, not my great Sufi. So. The word is one thing, the essence is another thing. Let's not be deceived by the word. Buya Hamka Rahimahullah has written several books on Tasawuf. Among the first is Tasawuf Modern, and then another one, Kamurnian Tasawuf. Uh, he distinguished between true Sufism and, 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 and you might say, corrupted Sufism. So, I would consider him a Sufi, if you ask me about, is Buya Hamka a Sufi? I say, yes, he's a Sufi, but he never used that title to himself. What are the reasons you call him Sufi? Well, I know that he has been uh, concerned uh, with the spiritual uh, exercises uh, because he was brought up by his father, Aji Rasul train him that way. So, tahajud ni dah biasa daripada kecil lagi dengan dengan bapa dia. And then yang dia cari dalam hidup dia apa? Dia cari nama ke? Dia cari pangkat ke? Dia cari kebesaran ke? Dia dapat semua itu. Dia dapat pangkat, dia dapat kebesaran, dia dapat nama, dia dapat kehebatan. The most, you might say, one time the most popular da'i, the whole of Indonesia. President uh, Soekarno pun sayang kat dia walaupun tak setuju dengan dia. Soeharto apalagi menghormati dia. Akhirnya Soeharto lantik dia sebagai Oh sorry, I am on this. Uh, Buya Hamka was um, appointed as uh, as the as the chairman of the Indonesian Ulama Council. Majlis Ulama Indonesia MUI. And that was highest honor for a religious scholar. And by Suharto, President Suharto at that time. He accepted this position, but he said, I, uh, please don't worry about getting me a car or a special office. What I have is good enough. I don't need a special car. So he lived without all those things, and I'm not sure whether he got salary also. I think he probably did not take the salary, I believe, but I have to check once again. <coughs> and then he came out with a fatwa um, that um, it is not right for Muslims to participate in the religious celebration of, of the um, of the religious um, uh, occasions like uh, like the Christmas, uh, um, he explains later on. It's okay to wish your Christian friends Christmas. It's okay, is it? But to participate in the religious celebration, that's not allowed because the belief is not the same. But we have to respect our Christian friends because we love Jesus. And they love Jesus too, right? So it's okay, because they think it is the birthday of Jesus, although the birthday is disputed. You know, the Orthodox, the Greek, the Catholics, the Protestant, they all have their own dates, you know? But they think this is the birthday of Christ, or Christmas. And so, okay, you can wish them well, but you are not allowed to participate in the religious celebrations or let be in the church. And, you know, sing along with the rest. You're not allowed to do that. He was asked to withdraw that fatwa you know, because the Christians protested and uh, Suharto also did not feel happy. Menteri Agama asked him to, to withdraw and to. He said, No, I, I stick to it. I stick to it. Then people insisted, uh, Well, okay, they withdrew it without his permission and insisted that he would he said, okay instead of me withdrawing it I will resign my position. And he resigned. He resigned. 
this position. Maknanya dia tidak dia tidak deluded by power, not deluded by position, by popularity. He was popular, very popular. Maknanya ada karisma lah bu ya hakanya ada karisma. Tapi dia hidup sederhana, hidup sederhana, tidak mengejar pangkat, tidak sombong, and dia menggunakan pendekatan Berifq menyampaikan agama dengan lemah lembut, dengan kelembutan, dengan gentleness, because gentleness was the attribute of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most gentle person according to Anas was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah said that He loves people. Allah is gentle, and Allah loves. Gentleness, a rift, and if you do anything with gentleness, uh, then uh, it is beautified. But without gentleness, things become ugly. So our dawah has to be with gentleness. Our communication, our dialogue with people, with others, particularly with people of other religions, should be with gentleness. Okay. Alright then, um, okay now we come to jenis ketiga orang-orang yang kalau di sini terjemahan this people siapa dia terjemahnya? Oh, okay, Professor Tengku Haji Ismail Yakub ini rektor IAIN Wali Songo oh, orang lama ni. Okay, well, this is he was the first to translate uh, I think the Hia Alamudin in Indonesia in the early 50s so itu, tapi dia guna orang yang buat berbuat-buat tersawuf berbuat-buat tersawuf berbuat tersawuf ha? pretending to be you know? alangkah banyaknya banyak terpedaya bagi orang-orang ini dan yang terpedaya dari mereka itu banyak golongan so this group uh, yang pseudo sufis ni banyak sub branches pula kan? uh, iaitu orang-orang yang berbuat-buat tersawuf zaman sekarang uh, zaman sekarang zaman is during the time of of um, of Al Ghazali rahimahullah there were many sub groups among the pseudo sufis mereka itu terpedaya dengan pakaian They are deluded uh, by the dress um, Bentuk, the form Dan tutur kata And by the speech Lalu mereka membantu orang-orang yang, ben yang benar Orang-orang yang benar dari kaum sufi Pada pakaian mereka, bentuk mereka, kata-kata mereka Adab suka mereka, adab istilah mereka Kata-kata istilah mereka So Uh, they will be assisting people uh, or orang benar <coughs> young people who really want to be good uh, genuine Sufis in how they should dress how they should carry themselves how they should be speaking and then the, the etiquette adat, so, adat sopan adat istiadat mereka the, the, uh, the protocol and the kata-kata istilah mereka and also the kind of uh, Um, vocabulary or, nomen uh, or nomenclatures they use Pada keadaan mereka yang zahiriah Tentang pendengaran Menari, bersuci, solat, duduk atas tika, sejadah Serta menundukkan kepala yang memasukkan dalam saku maju Seperti orang yang bertafakur Maka menarikkan nafas ke atas uh, Pada menarikkan nafas ke atas dan pada merendahkan suara, pada perbicaraan dan lain-lain dari segi sifat dan bentuk okay. meaning that these people uh, takes great care uh, with regard to their external appearances and also with regard to pendengaran, this sima this is one of the uh, issue, controversial issues listening to music Uh, music ini bukan music uh, rock ataupun rap 
after playing jazz, whatever, all these modern forms, but uh, classical music at that time, it was, uh, to some Sufis, it's allowed. Yeah? If, if that kind of music uh, elevates you spiritually, and it has nothing, nothing haram in it, it's all men, and uh, the musical instruments may not be just, just drum, lah. like, like uh, the, the Sufis, yeah? the Rumi, the Mavlawi, they have also the flute. No? But the, the total sound and music is spiritually elevating. This is allowed. So, Al Ghazali pun benar. Okay? Uh, menari. Menari itu pun bukan tarian yang biasa, but you know, it is like uh, the Mavlawi. I think it, during Ghazali's time, there was no more language when he came later, and eh? uh, then Rumi came later, I think three, four centuries after Ghazali. Uh, but now they have the, the, the Dervish, Dervish yeah. punya dance, kan? But that is, again, spiritually elevating. But now, of course, unfortunately, highly commercialized. bersuci, solat, duduk atas tika sejarah menundukkan kepala dan memasukkannya dalam saku baju hmm. those people in those days dia punya saku baju this big you know, a goat can go in kambing boleh masuk jadi antara antara ciri-ciri orang sufi yang baik ni kepala dia masuk dalam tu <laughs> Maksudnya dia begitu menghina diri lah, eh? tidak merasa bangga masuk kepala dalam tu lah, tak kepala tunduk tu biasa lah. Eh? Jadi orang-orang yang dianggap sufi tu pada waktu itu itu gambarannya. And so all this they have all the all the external signs of sufihood. <laughs> Lepas itu, ah juga uh, seperti orang yang bertafakur, state of meditation dia pun buat macam itu, menarik nafas ke atas dan para merendahkan suara, menarik nafas ke atas. You know, using breathing techniques. Masa zaman Al Zali pun dah ada breathing techniques ni. Yeah. Apalagi dalam kalau kalau tarikat tak syabandi adalah breathing techniques. Breathing techniques ni bukan dalam Islam, but to me more from Buddhism, the Buddhist of Transoxania pada masa itu, zaman zaman itu mungkin ada dah pengaruh pengaruh spiritual Buddhism pada masa itu. Beats ni pun bukan daripada Islam kan? Beats ni, nasbahah ni, orang orang Buddhist were using this. Song. Tapi perkara itu mubahlah tidak menjadi haram. It's part of Islamization, <coughs> no? <laughs> okay, because it, it facilitates your memorization of God. But now they go more technical, dah press, ya? Tak biasa, ambo aku tak biasa. Tak biasa, bahkan ni jari. Jari, jari, jari. Mudah-mudahan jari ni jadi saksi, ya? <laughs> Kadang-kadang terlupa Pakai jari kadang-kadang terlupa Betul lah, betul, betul, betul That's right Saya ingat kalau Ustaz Usman dulu dia Dia buat almarhum Dia biasa, dia hidup dia dalam Dalam zikrullah Selalu zikrullah Walaupun kita tak nampak dia zikrullah Dia is doing zikrullah And then he will have the tanda tu From Kali Kalau seratus And then So I used to see small pieces of paper macam pagar gitu and then krrrr gitu, macam pagar rupanya dia, dia hitung tu seratus tak satu, satu satu bila sepuluh tiang tu mana seribu ni dia dapat kalau dia dah ada buat dia cancel lah kita dia ingat lukisan apa dia pagar runtuh <laughs> saya ingat sepuluh 
Okey. Um, dan semua itu, okey. Manakala mereka berbuat semua itu dengan memberikan memberatkan diri dan mereka menyerupakan dengan orang-orang sufi yang benar pada hal-hal itu. Nescaya mereka menyangka pula bahawa mereka orang sufi just because they have adopted the outward uh, signs of a sufi they tend to believe that they are also sufis macam tadilah that new yorker are you a muslim no i'm not i'm a sufi ini masalahnya in in the west map sufism is understood by some westerners so many west as a separate religious community and those who want to take advantage of this yang nak cari duit ni dia ni kata dia sufi lah so datang lah masalah kan they are spiritually hung, thirsty looking for spiritual nourishment and you have a group you invite them to a place say um, Central Park New York has a big Central Park you go into the Central Park You have the, you have the pakaian Arab, Juban, or all people will come, just like the Maharishi, kan? <coughs> because uh, Americans are really thirsty for spiritual nourishment, so you can make money. The past two, you make a lot of money. You cabut lah pergi ke California pula, and so you end up becoming very rich. And this is what happened with those Maharishis. They have their own communes, but later on, people. People discover lah, uh, and, and, and expose uh, expose them for what they really are. So zaman sekarang banyak zaman dulu pun ada juga. Okay, mereka tidak memayahkan diri sekali kali pada mujahadah, riadah, mengintip hati, mensucikan batin dan zahir. Uh, so they do not do all these things that Sufis do. Muraqaba, muanaka. Maka ni, apa ni tu panisnya unsur, murakabah mengintip-intip dalam hati kita, muhasabah, self reproduction, mujahadah, fighting against your nafs, riadah, spiritual exercises yang you buat, dia tak ada buat semua ni, dia tak buat semua ni, tapi dia pretend to be sufi, and to the public he is a sufi. I'm sure there are many of that in the world today. Okay. Tapi mereka ini, mereka berlomba-lomba pada sepotong roti, uang logam dan sebiji buah-buahan. Mereka dengki berdengki pada titik dalam biji buah-buahan dan kulit yang masuk dalam biji buah-buahan. Sebahagian mereka merobek-robek kehormatan sebahagian yang lain manakala dia berselisih pada sesuatu dari maksudnya. So, in actual fact, these people are after material wealth. Berlomba-lomba pada sepotong roti. So even a piece of bread, they are really after it. Bukan lah, literally. This is metaphorical. Yeah. Maknanya, begitu kedekutnya, yeah. begitu, uh, you know, so desirous of wealth, even a cent means so much untuk dia accumulate wealth. Dan mereka dengki-mendengki pada titik dalam biji, dalam an-naqir benda yang kecil-kecil ni so, berdengki soal yang kecil-kecil yang titik bengek titik bengek lah is the word for it yang, yang, dan kulit yang masuk dalam biji berbuah al-qitmir al-qitmir dalam date kan ada dan selaku putih tu kan ha. dalam hal ini dia orang berkelahi kita pun ada orang macam tu kan dalam benda-benda yang yang um, Not only benda yang remeh temeh lah, benda kecil-kecil yang tak penting itu dia menjadi beban pertikaian. Okay, so he said terpedayanya mereka itu jelas. Their guru 
is so apparent. Contohnya, seperti seorang wanita tua yang mendengar bahawa orang-orang yang berani dan pahlawan-pahlawan dari orang-orang yang berperang, nama mereka tetap telah tetap dalam daftar kerajaan. Dan bagi mereka, bagi masing-masing mereka ditulis suatu daerah dari daerah kerajaan dengan keberaniannya. Lalu wanita tua itu merindukan dirinya untuk dituliskan baginya sepotong dari kerajaan. Lalu ia memakai baju besi, meletakkan di atas kepalanya topi wajah, mempelajari beberapa bait nyanyian pahlawan-pahlawan dan ia membiasakan membawa bait-bait nyanyian itu dengan lagu pahlawan-pahlawan tersebut sehingga menjadi mudah kepadanya. Dan ia mempelajari cara berjalan dalam barisan, bagaimana cara mereka menggerakkan tangan dan mencapai semua sifat mereka pada pakaian, tutur kata, gerak geri dan diam. Kemudian wanita tadi menuju ke tempat tentera supaya namanya dicantum pada daftar orang-orang berani. Dan tatkala ia sampai ke tempat tentera itu, lalu ia dibawa ke kantor penerimaan tentera. Registration lah ni. Kantor itu memerintahkan supaya wanita itu membuka topi wajah dan baju besi dan lihat apa yang di bawahnya dan ia diuji dengan mengadakan perlawanan dengan sebahagian orang-orang berani untuk diketahui nilai kemampuannya pada keberanian tatkala ia dilepaskan dari topi wajah dan baju besi rupanya ia seorang wanita tua lemah dan lumpuh tidak sanggup membawa baju besi dan topi wajah lalu ditanyakan kepadanya Apakah engkau datang untuk mempermain-mainkan raja Untuk menghina keluarga raja Dan untuk menipu mereka Ambillah wanita ini dan lemparkanlah pada tapak gajah Supaya dipijaknya Maka wanita itu dilemparkan kepada gajah Maka begitulah adanya Keadaan orang-orang yang mendakwakan tasawuf pada hari kiamat Apabila tersingkap dari mereka tutupnya dan mereka dibawa kepada hakim yang maha agung yang tidak memandang kepada pakaian dan kain yang ditenun akan tetapi memandang kepada rahsia hati. Okay, I think jelaskan. No need to explain. Right? On the day of judgment, you go with all this, uh, all this um, apa, paraphernalia which is so used in this world, thinking that you you want to be seen as a Sufi. But Allah doesn't look at all this external form. Allah looks at your heart, and your true self is exposed on the day of judgment. Okay, then he moves on to suatu golongan lain, yaitu yang ber yang bertambah di atas mereka tadi pada keterpedayaan kerana sulitnya kepadanya mengikuti mereka pada buruknya pakaian dan rela. Lalu golongan ini bermaksud menampakkan diri dengan tasawuf. Ini grup-grup uh, sudah sufis lagi lah. Dan tidak boleh tidak daripada berhias dengan pakaian mereka. So you still need because sufis in the Middle East in those days they wore coarse woolen garment, yeah, coarse woolen garment. And among the etymology of the word tasawuf and sufi is a suf, suf. Suf ialah uh, garment made of 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 um, uh, of wool, bukan wool yang 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 cantik yang ditenun kan, but rough wool. And Ghazali had to wear that also when he was a Sufi. Tidak boleh tidak daripada orang. Okay. Lalu mereka meninggalkan sutra dan sutra mentah. Dan mereka mencari kain terjahit yang mahal baju yang halus dan kain sejadah yang dicelup mereka memakai dari kain yang harganya lebih tinggi dan sutra dari semakin seseorang dari mereka menyangka bersama yang demikian bahawa dia berbuat-buat menjadi orang sufi dengan semata-mata warna kain so during the time of Ghazali mungkin tidak tidak lagi guna pakaian sufi itu but uh, this uh, sufis also wore very nice uh, dress and uh, They also imitate uh, this dress. Okay, I 
I think that's uh, not that important. I come to another group. Uh, I think maybe this is more more serious. So to go along and lie. Zali will always say, Firqa uh, ukhra. So to go along and lie. There are so many firqa, so many groups. So firqa. Fir in fir in firqa firqa fir. Now firqa ukhra. Yaitu yang yang satu ni yang mendakwakan ada ilmu ma'rifah ya yeah? the next group firqa ukhra juga iaitu yang serba boleh al ibahah ah itu sufi juga lah sufi lagi ya satu lagi golongan lain mereka melewati batas di atas satu melewati batas satu golongan lain lagi ia menyempitkan atas dirinya dengan urusan makanan yang dimakannya sehingga ia mencari yang halal dan okey. Satu lagi golongan lain mereka melewati tingkat ini dan mem- memulai menempuh jalan kepada Allah. Now getting closer to the right sufis lah, tapi akan terpedaya juga. Okay, so sufi groups ni banyak sub groups. Now we come to yang tadi go back to um, golongan yang mendakwakan ilmu makrifah, yang menyaksikan kebenaran. So they witness al haq They claim to have ma'rifatullah, and they claim to be able to uh, witness the truth al haq and they also claim to be able to achieve the maqam, uh, the spiritual stations, and the uh, ahwal um, the uh, particular conditions in which uh, the Sufis are uh, Sufi in, in Tasawuf you have something called maqam and hal maqam and hal so this one is maqam maqamat and ahwal These stations, these are states. Um, with your mujahada, with your riyadah, you can spot them, uh, and spiritual exercises, riyadah, mujahada, and all that, you will go through many states, many states, akhwah. When you reach a certain state, then Allah will elevate you to a certain maqam. So this is this is acquired, this is given by Allah. And your Shaykh will train you in such a way you have to go through certain ahwal like your job, Arif, now you join, let's say, my tariqa. So I am your sheikh. I want to train you, I want to test you. I will ask you, your job for the next three years, Arif, is to wash the sleepers of those people going into the mosque. Okay, they could. Dalam tariqa, you cannot say no. You have to follow. Because you, you, you believe that your sheikh knows your situation and he went through all that already so your job is to wash or oh, sleep for our masjid or to arrange slippers or what menghina kan diri ataupun pergi tempat pasar kan putih sampah-sampah yang orang buang itu diri basuh cuci dan you can eat from that also so the sheikh will ask you to do all that because he wants you to move from maqam to maqam. Yeah? Maqam, of course, the first maqam is tawbah, or the first state is tawbah. And then you go to so many maqam. Yang yang baik, ialah dia tak claim apa-apa. Yang pseudo akan merasakan dia dah sampai maqam. Dia sampai satu maqam, Ya apa yang dia buat you you arif you murid kita boleh persoalkan 
you kena baik sangka dengan syekh dia nampak dia tak sembahyang kan dia fikir yang kata dia tak sembahyang sebab dia kata dia ni sembahyang dia ni continuous solat daib dia berada dalam sembahyang dia tak perlu sembahyang lima waktu because he is always praying dia kata begitu you you percaya because you are in the tariqah you must percaya actually the sheikh is deluding himself and deluding you eh? nabi lebih tinggi dari Muhammad lebih tinggi kan daripada sheikh-sheikh adakah nabi pernah tinggal solat ha, yang sunat yang nawafil tak pernah kan ha, so kita kena kita punya criteria kita punya ukuran kita punya furqan is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam however good you may be but there is a contradiction with the prophet then be careful so i have seen some of this so called great sheikh eh? wanita wanita datang cium tangan gini ada boleh ada juga yang yang apa tu uh, you are be ice mayam they will take your wudu and they will drink from it ya betul nabi guna buat orang ambil nabi lah eh Ha. Okay. So, uh, maqamat al-ahwal uh, And, uh, okay Dia menyangka bahawa Yang demikian itu Lalu ia mengulangi, uh, mengulanginya Ia menyangka bahawa yang demikian itu lebih tinggi Dari ilmu orang-orang dahulu Dan orang-orang kemudian Lalu ia memandang kepada ahli-ahli fikih Ahli-ahli tafsir Ahli-ahli hadis Dan jenis-jenis ulama dengan mata kehinaan So dia dah memandang orang lain dah rendah Dia dia kan Pasal dia ada itu Makam tertentu kan Of course here the syaitan plays his role Kan Shaitan will tell him, Sheikh, Sheikh Kamal, you are now really very high now, eh? you are really high, you are now anggap wali lah ni, dekat dengan Allah lah ni, Sheikh Kamal, I am telling you, I got this message from from there, up there, dia mari dengan janggut putih, dengan serban, mari dalam mimpi pula kan, dia boleh mari dalam mimpi, so kita pun, oh ya, oh, hey, but I thought I will need another thing few more years to, I already reached that level Allah MashaAllah and then uh, so shaitan will always do his part also lebih-lebih orang awam sehingga orang petani meninggalkan ladangnya dan penjahit meninggalkan jahitannya so the ordinary people can see like, macam keramat lah some people must dia masuk kampung oh seorang keramat datang kampung kita Ah, habis tinggal kerja nak ikut tu keramat ini namakan keramat kan tapi di Malaysia ni have yeah. is it like uh, some cups yang they ask money and those people in the cup leave their religion and yeah. home very good good cups very good very good point you raise because there's so many cults now any cults Uh, and um, uh, of course, people think they are really genuine good, yeah? but when you want to go inside it, uh, we had at one time we got to the Darul Afkam, we got to be in Ustaz Ashari, and then he called to him again. So, ada yang menyangka dia dapat melihat Rasulullah in in waking state. Yaqadatan was claimed. Okay, so uh, yeah, and there are so many cults, and people are willing to uh, go to heaven with the leader. That happened in Gimana, in Colorado, in America. Colorado, apa nama that cult that group? He he finally he killed himself. His followers, they are I mean, poison. You're going to heaven. Into heaven. 
ambil poison dan mati semua dia pun mati juga um dan dia termasuk di antara orang-orang yang didekatkan al muqarrabin Allah rasa dia muqarrabin <laughs> muqarrabin muqarrabin dengan iblis yes nak muqarrabin dengan Allah Okey satu lagi grup uh, golongan lain jatuh pada serba boleh al ibah semua boleh permissible ha? permissible permissible mubah ha, dalam uh, hukum kita ada uh, mubah benda-benda yang mubah yang yang permissible yang tak disebut dalam Quran sunnah tapi permissible boleh kita buat tapi kalau ibahah is liberal being liberal then all being, liberalism is also ibah Tapi ada sufi-sufi dulu yang apa yang dinamakan antinomian sufis, antinomian. Ini pun termasuk ibah. Dia tak ikut apa-apa dah dia semua boleh. Mereka melipatkan tikar permainan agama, melipatkan menolak segala hukum dan menyamakan antara halal dan haram setengah mereka mendakwa bahawa Allah tidak memerlukan kepada amalku maka mengapa aku memayahkan diriku Allah is not asking for me to do all that it's for you people orang bawah ni the, the lay people yes but me Allah does not need so Setelah mereka mengatakan bahawa manusia telah memberikan dirinya Mensucikan hati dari nafsu syahwat Dan dari mencintai dunia Dan itu adalah mustahil Mereka tidak memberatkan apa yang tidak mungkin Dan yang terpedaya demikian Ialah orang yang tidak berpengalaman Adapun kami telah mencoba Dan kami telah mengetahui bahawa yang demikian itu mustahil Kami telah mencoba Tapi could be Al-Ghazali referring to himself I'm not too sure lah Oh. Huh? Uh, I think Mariami I know, mm-hmm. I know. Um, okay, um, I'm not too sure where to put this group man. Tapi dia, yalah, this is maybe um, a, a misguided mystical movement lah. mm. yeah? because dia dia balik kepada Maryam uh, Siti Maryam Rahimahullah uh, as dia punya spiritual figure lah. and uh, and this is one way to also bring the Christians and Jews and Muslims together uh, or a Christian and that Mariam to mother of God I do not know about the Jews but uh, so Mariamia could be a form of, um, of misguided mysticism mysticism yes because Fitz of Sean was a mystic uh, he was also transcendent mystic Yani, transcending different religions mm-hmm. and he developed this idea of transcendental uh, uh, transcendental uh, what's the word for it transcendent anyway inshallah it will come the transcendental meditation the, the, the Hindus developed 
but in him. Uh, transcendental unity of religions. Mm. Transcendental unity of religions. Be careful with this, because there are some followers in the world, in Indonesia, in Malaysia, I don't know, but there could be. Because give me idea of any God atas the Tuhan. Actually, God. God is affable. I mean, God is a mystery. You can know the attributes, but the that, the essence, is unknowable. And because of that, God, um, but God loves human beings, so he doesn't want human beings to suffer in trying to reach him. So as long as you are doing things sincerely, in a particular way, that's your religion, and your aim is to reach me, okay, I accept your way. So I accept the Christian way, I accept the Jewish way, I accept the Buddhist way, I accept uh, the Islamic way also. You can, after all, you are all trying to reach me. But I am so mysterious, so difficult for you to really get close, so I can accept all this. So God is too complex for any one particular religion to say, I got it. Okay, so Islam cannot say, and we say, in the dina in the lahi islam. Agama yang di kira kepada Allah, ialah Islam. Jadi bagi mereka, that is you are claiming something that's really too big for you to claim. Because God is too complex for any one religion. So God allows, uh, allows multiplicity. Yeah? So Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, Hinduism, it's the moment you do say. Yeah. At this level, you see the differences. The Sharia will differ, you see the differences. But once you, you reach this level, you see the unity. No? You don't see the differences. You transcend the millennial. So this is transcendental unity of religions, which uh, has been spread uh, in Europe, in America, but I do not know whether it is really in Southeast Asia, but there are some people following this as well. And uh, I think liberalism, in the sense of religious pluralism, is one form. But it doesn't come from Fritz of Sean. It doesn't come, doesn't come from him, but uh, comes from uh, John Hicks, of uh, London, New England, John Hicks. Christian priest who taught. But he experienced with the, with the Hindus and so on, and so he came up with the idea that um, God would also accept these people, they are sincere. So, so he believed in, in, in pluralism and one good thing, he did not believe in God incarnate. So he came up with a book called The Myth of God Incarnate. John Hicks. Huh? Uh, not many people refer to this, but this is Pukul Agama Christian oleh Padri The Myth of God incarnate. John Hicks. So, he believes in God, but he doesn't believe in that Jesus is God in flesh. So that brings him closer to Islam. But when he talks about all religions are, you know, are valid, are valid, because these are all sincere, serious attempt to reach the same goal. But what they do not seem to understand, it's not the same goal. 
we are riding different mountains, reaching different peaks, we're not going to the same peak. Now, of course, you can say all roads lead to Rome. But as that, I uh, believe that judge said, but some roads lead to where? Let's do what MGB. You say all roads lead to Rome, but some roads lead to what MGB or something like that. Uh, okay, so good question, no? Because I think we have to be careful with this. But this it is high mysticism, very, very high mysticism. Once you get into it, you will drown into it. And then you see all the shari'ah, shari'ah, and then you see all the shari'ah, and then you see all the shari'ah, and then you see all the shari'ah, all these things. Huh? And, uh, so, dalam Mariamah, hantarnya lah, we go to the next one. Yeah. Bogia. I hear that. And I saw. You read? Oh. Ah. Oh, yeah, bro. This is like a... Mixture between, um, you know, the Red Indian culture, oh. uh, uh, wrong understanding of the Indian mm. and the leader will be in the center mm. with his birth suit, mm. and the rest will be dancing around with their birthday suit. Yeah, all right. Mm. Right. Uh, we also have many lists of. Every state, ah, yeah. the have to deal with it. Yeah. Mm. So, mm. Every state. Mm. Actually, one of the biggest number will be like that. Now, okay, let's go. Unfortunately, mm. the biggest number will be like that. Oh, sure. Where the most religious people are. Allah, Tapi kalau saya baca kan dalam kita harian dulu sebut tiga puluh enam ajaran sesat di Islam kita baca jadi Kelantan. Okay, so uh, kita dah another five minutes to twelve, so I will open this uh, for Q and A. Kalau ada apa-apa komen, ada apa-apa soalan yang perlu diperhatikan, silakan. So this uh, group, um, are they found in uh, Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Malaysia, to be good? I am not sure. Okay. Mostly in the West. In the West, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, maybe yeah. the students of Christophe so no. will be mm. now dispersed. Mm. Uh, I don't know whether the sub teams mm. would uh, still practice it the way Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because he, he's no more around. Right? Mm. <laughs> yes. That I'm Ah, yeah. Ah, uh, pun uh, dianggap punya the way. Ah, tapi dia banyak pengikut di England. Tak tahu sekarang masih ada ke tak. At what time? Yeah, you can go along. It's all about when you put this side of the agama. There is a two agama person dearly. Yeah, I said that out. Okay, so yeah, yeah, okay. Money, you don't have to be a Muslim to, to join. Okay, someone you got any idea? No, can I think what you got? But then, yeah. Ada yang kasih mengatakan bahawa nak masuk ke nak kenal Tuhan, you don't have to be Muslim. Um, you can be a Christian, you can be a Muslim, but you can be apa ni? A member of this tarikat 
without you having to convert to Islam. Itu bahaya lah. Orang tertarik lah masuk. So to me, these are the um, apa tu? Tipu daya syaitan. Gurur al gharur Al gharur Delusion of siapa dia? Of al gharu Gha-ru The delusion of Shaitan He is called al gharu Okay, so Don't forget him He doesn't forget us it's part of his job. <laughs> and never, he doesn't have a sabbatical holiday. Part of the deal. Okay, any other? Okay, so keep the. Tarekat is. Um, a brotherhood, a Sufi brotherhood untuk uh, menjadi lebih disiplin ya, lebih teratur, lebih organized dan uh, kita boleh terima uh, secara prinsipal uh, cuma uh, ini cuma apakah tarikat itu um, tidak membawa kita kepada cara-cara yang boleh bercanggah dengan akidah syariah atau berakhlak Islam ya Jadi kita kena pasti kalau kita nak masuk tarikat kita kena dapat kepastian bahawa tarikat itu tarikat yang muktabarah yang boleh diterima kerana tidak ada unsur-unsur yang menyeleweng dalamnya banyak tarikat mengandungi unsur-unsur yang menyeleweng kerana, kerana tarikat itu boleh boleh membawa orang. Memuja, memuja syekh, memuja akhir syekh. Ada satu tak? Tadi tak nak syabandi. Ada yang acceptable, ada yang tidak. Dari Qadariyah, antara yang terkenal daripada Syekh Abdul Qadir Al-Jilani, seorang sufi hebat. Memang hebat tu. Tapi Qadariyah itu pada umumnya okey. Tapi mungkin ada juga sub-sub group yang tidak okey. So, kita sebelum memasuki, kita tahu betul-betul. What it is. Because once you get in, it's difficult to get out. So, kita nak masuk sesuatu yang membawa kita kepada jalan yang benar, kan? Tapi para sahabat tabiin Rasulullah SAW tak ada pakai tarikat lah. Jadi patutnya kita kena kata tarikat kita ikut tarikat Muhammadiyah jalan hidup Rasulullah SAW. Itu yang patut kita ikut. Itu pun tak terbuat oleh kita. Itu pun tak terbuat lah. Kenapa nak cari yang lain-lain? Itu pun tak terbuat. Jadi, Rasulullah sebagai pemimpin kita, siapa? Asyik. Ya, Allah SWT. Kita tunduk pada dia sebab taat yang tak berbelah bagi ini hanya kepada manusia, kepada Rasulullah dia maksum. Yang lain-lain tidak maksum. This is a problem. Tapi dalam tarikat, dia menuntut kesetiaan yang you tak boleh tak boleh bersuah yes. yang tu oh, oh you want to add ok I'm so sorry <laughs> ok ok I thought you understood ok 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 yeah. so um, 
you know, if you join a tariqa, a Sufi tariqa, uh, you have to follow and you have to obey. And you have to submit to whatever the sheikh of the tariqa asks you to do. Okay. So it is sami'na wa ata'na. No way you can ask or you know excuse yourself. Um, so be careful to, to place your life in the hands of a fallible human being. The only infallible uh, human being is the Prophet okay. Where you can say, yes, I obey you completely. But all other human beings, they are subject to mistakes. Yeah. So if you make a, a commitment or you make a, a promise to obey someone um, and that someone is not Maksum, you may be in danger at all, spiritual danger. So, people can, the sheikh can exploit you. Okay. Okay, so, Arif, Tarika apa? Saya tak ada. Saya, saya cuba nak, nak ikut seorang yang saya anggap ini, tapi lama-kelamaan saya diberitahu dia menyeleweng. Saya, Ustaz Osman yang beritahu saya, Orang ni orang tua saya tu tu dia lah. Kelama-kelama ada yang menyalui. So saya bimbang kalau bukan saya saya orang orang yang dalam mereka yang betul memang hebat dari situ hanya dia. Tapi saya takut. Saya takut nak serah diri saya kepada manusia yang tidak masuk. Kebanyakan ayat kita pun kita kena nak persoalkan benda yang kita tak setuju. Bapa kita, ini orang lain. Tapi bila you masuk, susah nak keluar. Ada orang cuba masukkan saya di waktu saya di Jakarta, saya tak, tak mau masuk. Macam-macam dia kata, dia kata nampak nama Allah di dahi saya. Oh, nampak nama Allah. Hebatlah saya kan nampak nama Allah di dahi saya. The Mahdi is like they're trying to understand what's going on. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was in Jakarta for eight months and I attended one group of uh, followers of Tariqa. And they were in Zikir and all that. And I was just there just to see what's going on. But then, then they started saying, oh, we, we see the, the letter Allah in your forehead. In my forehead. Imagine if I were to you know, be deceived by that, then I would think I am special. Yeah. I can, but that is one way to trap me to join them. I want to ask them. Okay, uh, so let us uh, end our our um, uh, meeting today with Tasbih Kafara, uh, asking Allah to forgive us, uh, to guide the Ummah to save the Ummah from this uh, pandemic and to uh, make this uh, 1442 Hijriya year a better year than the, the previous one, inshallah, and to uh, forgive me my sins and my uh, shortcomings. And inshallah, by Allah's grace, we'll meet again after two weeks, inshallah. Subhanakallah, uh, wa bihamdika, ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان ما في خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتوانسوا بالحق وتوانسوا بالصبر والله أعلم السلام عليكم